For a while, OnePlus was the champion of offering great performance without the price label attached. And to some extent, the Nord series still offers that. The latest OnePlus Nord 2T is a lot of phone for the money, but how does it compare to the competitive mid-ranges from the big names, specifically the Galaxy A53 from Samsung? Both have similar full retail prices, at least here in the UK, and each has its own strengths and weaknesses, but which should you spend your money on? I'm Cam Bunsen from Pocketlint, and in this video I'll hopefully help you to decide. If you do like it, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. First up is design, and unlike some of our other comparisons between similarly priced products, the differences between the two phones are immediately apparent, even when it comes to the basics of the looks. Whether we're talking shape, in-hand feel, or materials used, they're completely different in ways that actually make a difference to the experience. For instance, the Samsung has a completely flat back, where OnePlus has gone with curved edges. When you add the fact that Samsung has a soft plastic rear and OnePlus has a glossy glass, it's hard to imagine them feeling any more different. On the one hand, the curved edges on the OnePlus make it more comfortable to hold. However, the glossy shiny back is a lot more slippery than the Samsung, and so you may find it needs a bit more grip to hold it, or at the very least it will slip off a lot of surfaces. It's one of those weird instances where I prefer the in-hand feel of one, but for practical reasons would probably choose the Samsung approach. And that's without mentioning the camera housing design, where Samsung has this quite minimal and subtle area that ramps up seamlessly from the same material as the rear panel, OnePlus has a protruding monstrosity that doesn't look good at all to me. As for the front, both have flat displays with punch or cameras, Samsung's opted for the camera right in the middle, which I think makes a lot more sense, if only because I find it gets in the way less, and helps the front have a sense of symmetry. The other thing worth considering from the design standpoint is water and dust resistance. Samsung's phone has been certified to IP67 levels, which means it can be submerged in quite shallow water and it'll be fine. OnePlus does have some water resistance and will likely survive the odd splash or daily accident, but it has no official rating. One minor thing in OnePlus's favour is haptic feedback. When you're typing, for instance, the Samsung has much more of a cheaper, buzzy feel as feedback, OnePlus has a much more subtle tapping feeling, which is a lot nicer. Now moving on, and what's interesting is that from a spec perspective at least, the two displays are very similar. Samsung's is slightly larger at 6.5 inches compared to the 6.43 on the OnePlus, but the two share the same 1080x2400 resolution, and they're both coated with the same Gorilla Glass 5. With that said, there is still a difference. For instance, Samsung's 120Hz peak refresh is higher than the OnePlus Nord's 90. However, that might not actually make the difference you would assume it would. We'll discuss this in the performance section in a second, but let's just say the one that should feel smoother and faster doesn't a lot of the time. Now looking at them side by side with both in their natural modes, there is a difference in colour and contrast too. OnePlus, for instance, seems to be a little more saturated and has higher contrast, and that can make images pop a bit more. It does have its drawbacks, however. We found with my skin tone and my family's skin tone, the overall impression is a much pinker and more red look. In fact, oranges, pinks and reds do tend to border a little on the oversaturated. Samsung's natural look is more natural and true to life. With a slightly yellower golden tone, less aggressive on the reds, it makes things softer and more pleasant to look at. Both allow you to customise the colours and calibration to some degree, and they'll let you choose settings with more vivid colours, plus tweaking the white balance, so you should be able to get it looking the way that you want. As for brightness, there doesn't appear to be much difference here to the eye, both are relatively bright. From a software side, however, they both run Android 12 systems, Samsung with a quite heavy approach with One UI, and lots of preloaded apps from Samsung, OnePlus has Oxygen OS which doesn't add a lot of additional extras, and it's cleaner in a lot of ways. Samsung, however, will give you quite a long commitment to software and security patches and have recently been very good at delivering them promptly. OnePlus will give you two to three years of major updates and doesn't tend to deliver updates as quickly as Samsung does. Moving on to performance, speed and battery. And as we mentioned a little in the software section, OnePlus's approach to software seems very much about being light, fluid and fast. And that translates to a phone experience that feels a lot more responsive and quick than the Samsung. The difference in everyday tasks or just navigating the user interface is night and day. It just feels a lot smoother and quicker or rather more consistently responsive. Samsung's can feel quick, but as we noticed with the more expensive S22 models as well, 
Some areas of the interface did seem to lag and stutter a bit. Whether this is because Samsung has more bloat, I don't know. It's just the experience that I had. From a processor perspective, the Nord 2T has the MediaTek Dimensity 1300, which, while not flagship level, is a strong performer. We didn't have any issues with it loading any of our favourite games or apps. And when we compare them side by side, the Nord is noticeably quicker at loading them than the Samsung too. Even basic apps like Twitter, Amazon Shopping or YouTube would take a second or so longer on the Exynos 1280 powered Samsung. It also comes with more RAM as standard. In the UK at least, the Nord has either 8 or 12 gigabytes and 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes of storage. The Samsung comes with 6 gigabytes and 128 gigabytes of storage, but also has the option to expand it via micro SD card, so if you're someone who needs that, the OnePlus won't offer it. As for battery life, it's probably no surprise that we had more left in the tank at the end of a workday with the Samsung than with the OnePlus. That was expected given the larger 5000 mAh battery versus the Nord's 4500. With two to three hours of relatively light usage, social media and such, the Nord would finish the day with somewhere between 35 and 40% left over. Samsung's would be more like 50%, making it almost a two-day battery. However, the two couldn't be more different when it comes to charging times. OnePlus Nord 2T's 80W wired charger, which comes in the box, can refill the phone's battery in about 27 minutes and most of that refill is done in the first quarter of an hour. Samsung's only reaches the heights of 25 watts, and that's only if you have a compatible charger. It doesn't ship with one in the box. Okay, so cameras, and while they have similar makeup, they're not identical. Both lead with a higher resolution primary camera, OnePlus goes with 50 megapixels, Samsung 64. Then the two have ultra-wides, OnePlus has 8 megapixels, Samsung has 12. There are also low resolution added sensors like OnePlus's 2 megapixel depth sensor and Samsung's 5 megapixel macro and depth sensors. For this comparison however, we'll focus mostly on the primary and the ultra-wide rather than the lower resolution pointless additional lenses. What we found when using the Nord alongside the Samsung is that for the most part the main camera on the Nord 2T is stronger. It produces sharp images with well-balanced highlights and shadows. There's no crazy overexposing or horrendous contrast. Also compared to Samsung, we found it delivered more realistic representation of colours. Samsung pushes a little more towards that fake hyper-real look, seen in these greens here. OnePlus seems to push more towards a warmer or golden look. You can see this really clearly in the shots of these leaves, for instance. Samsung also seems to overexpose a little here, but when it comes to the ultrawide, it's the other way around. Nord 2T's camera is noticeably poorer when it comes to detail, balance of highlights and shadow. Results are quite washed out and lacking in any sharpness compared to the Samsung. So Samsung does quite a decent job of balancing the results between the two cameras. So despite, in my opinion, the Nord having the stronger primary camera, the ultrawide really lets down the experience. So in the end, as an overall verdict, it comes down to a couple of things for me. Performance and cameras. If you want a phone that feels smooth, loads any app quickly and just gets about its business with speed, the OnePlus is your phone. Plus it charges really quickly and the software experience is very bloat free. In Samsung's favour we have the more consistent results between the cameras and the longer battery life. Plus Samsung has generally been better at rolling out software and security updates in recent months. And also because it's been out a little longer you might find it a bit cheaper too. Let me know what you think of these two phones, which one have you gone with or which are you thinking of buying? Let me know in the comments down below or you can grab me on Twitter. I'm at Cam Bunton. If you did like this video again, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell and that way you won't miss any more. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.